2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. If you have your Bibles, I would encourage you to open to that section of Scripture. Paul is writing uh, an, an intimate uh, letter to a dear uh, son in Christ, Timothy. And in that letter, he, he is encouraging and entreating him to do two things. Verse 6, fan into flame the gift given to you. And verse 14, guard the deposit. Guard the deposit given to you by the Holy Spirit. And those two commands seem to be a little bit in odds with each other a little bit in conflict with each other. Because on the one hand, you have this fanning into the flames. This mic seems a little hot. Could it be turned down just a tad? Maybe not. Thank you. Uh, It's uh, just, uh, on the one hand, you have fanning into the flames, which is this consuming thing, this thing that uh, consumes the gift. And on the other hand, there's this preservation of guarding the gift, or the deposit. And so it can be challenging for us to understand exactly what is Paul telling us. He's talking to Timothy, and and maybe it's just Timothy's problem, but but what is God speaking to us, telling us about today? What is he teaching us? How can we resolve the conflict between fanning the flame and guarding the gift? And so that's what we're going to talk about today as we look in this text. In order to do that, we also need to understand what is being referred to when Paul talks about the gift. The Greek word for gift, I kind of joke with people often that, you know, every Sunday we have to have a Greek word. The Greek word for today, and I just saw Dora, the explorer, so I I feel like saying, can you say charis and charismata? Uh, Anyway, you have to see the movie to to get it. Uh, And uh, anyway, the Greek word is charismata, and it's a... It is a, uh, a word that's made up of two words, charis, gift, and mata, thing. It's like uh, you know, a substance, mata. We get the word material from it. So the gift is literally the free whatever it is, the free thing. Kind of like manna. You know, in the Old Testament, when they, the bread fell f- from uh, heaven, and the people ate it, and they named it manna. And I remember in college when I first learned what manna meant, because I thought it was like some kind of neat, deep spiritual word, and it just simply means, what is it? And that the people had, had, couldn't figure out what to call it, so they just said, well, whatever that stuff is, pick it up and eat it. You know, God said to. So it's the same thing. The gift is the free things that God has given. And Scripture talks about three categories of things. In the New Testament, charismata is a very common word for gift. Um, and there are three categories. First, there's the gift of eternal life. Like in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, when it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word charismata occurs there. It is the gift that's given to us of salvation. And then there's the gift of the calling that we have, that Timothy had, into, into ministry. Paul talks about this in Ephesians chapter 3 when he talks about the fact that God has chosen us, he has gifted us with a ministry. And then it's also used to refer to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who empowers us for specific activities in our Christian life. Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, I'd encourage you to write that in the margins and check, read them out uh, later today, but they describe the fact that the Holy Spirit gives us special abilities, special capacities to be used in the kingdom of God. And so Paul is saying to Timothy, Timothy, fan into flame the gift of eternal life which was given to you when you were baptized and my hand was laid upon you. You received forgiveness of sins and and redemption. You were declared to be a child of God. Fan into flame the ministry that was given to you when I laid my hands upon you and ordained you into the pastoral ministry. Fan into flame the gift of the Holy Spirit that was given to you 
so that you might walk not by flesh and blood, but by the power of the Spirit of the Lord. And this is important for us because we have those same gifts. We need to come today recognizing the fact that God has blessed us with those very same gifts. The gift of life, forgiveness, and mercy. The gift of a ministry, maybe not a pastoral ministry like Timothy or like myself or ministry in the church like David or music ministry or a specific ministry, but all Christians are given the ministry that's outlined in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Peter says that you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God to declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness. That's our ministry. Our ministry is to declare the praises of God who has called us out of darkness. And certainly as you read through Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, you're going to discover, if you don't know it already, that God has given you special abilities. We all are aware of our limitations. We all know what we can't do. And for many of us, the list of what we can't do is quite long. And the list of what we can do seems to be much, much too short. And when you read Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, I hope you read it and recognize that God is saying that list of what you can do is much longer than you think because it's not you, it's the Spirit doing it through you. And that God gives you the ability, the knowledge, the skills needed to accomplish His purpose as needed. And so we have infinite capacity because our God is infinitely generous in giving us the good gift. And and, and Paul uses the imagery of a candle or a flame to describe those gifts. I have a candle up here. It's a big place, and it's a very small candle, so you might not be able to see it, but it's it's up here. Let's see if I can get the light. It's first service. It lit fine, and then the AC kicked on, and it went off. So that doesn't mean that this is a pagan candle. It just means the AC. But just be aware that could happen. And I could be referring to the candle and look over and it's, it's actually out. So I'm going to try to keep an eye on it. But this, uh, Paul uses the imagery of a flame to describe the gifts that we have received. The gift of forgiveness and mercy and life. The gift of a calling and the gift of the power of the Spirit that we have. And when I think about that, I can't help but think about that old camp song This Little Gospel Light of Mine. You guys familiar with that song? Yes, This Little Gospel Light of Mine. We're going to sing that today. We're going to sing it maybe a different way than you're used to. Old McDonald, i got to look for Is David here? No, he skipped out on me. See, David, the first service kept me on track because I have a tendency to forget which verse I'm at. You'll see it. makes kind of... Why don't you stand up? And you don't have to have uh, your candle out. You don't have to have your candle out. But uh, I'm going to have my candle out. And just, you'll catch on. It's the tune of Old MacDonald. It goes like this. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. With a shine, shine here and a shine, shine there. Here a shine, there a shine, everywhere a shine, shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine with a no, no here and a no, no there. Here a no, there a no, everywhere a no, no. Shine, shine here and a shine, shine there. Here a shine, there a shine, everywhere a shine, shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Don't you try to it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't you try to it out. I'm going to let it shine with a here and a there, here a there, everywhere a no, no here and a no, no there, here a no, there a no, everywhere a no, no, shine, shine here and a shine, shine there, here a shine, there a shine, everywhere a shine, shine, this little gospel light of mine. I'm going to let it shine all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine with a round, round here and a round, round there. Here, around, there, around, everywhere, around, round. No, no, here and a no, no, there. Here, a no, there, a no, everywhere, a no, no. 
here and a there, here, a there, a everywhere, a shine, shine here and a shine, shine there. Every shine, shine, it's, it's gospel light of mine. Sorry, I'm gonna let it shine. I told you I get it mixed up. Uh, it will point the way to heaven. I'm gonna let it shine. It will point the way to heaven. I'm gonna let it shine with a point, point here and a point, point there. Here a point, there a point, everywhere a point, point, round, round here and around, round there. Here, around, there, around, everywhere, around, round, here and there, here, there, everywhere, no, no, here, and a no, no, there, here, a no, there, a no, everywhere, a no, no, shine, shine, here, and a shine, shine, there, here, a shine, there, a shine, everywhere, a shine, shine, this little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. All right, give yourselves a round of applause there, you survived. You can be seated. So what Paul is telling Timothy is he's saying, you've got all these wonderful, great, awesome gifts. Let them shine. But there's a problem, and that is that Timothy is timid. He's, he's not just shy. He's meek. He's, he's worried. He's, he, he doesn't like conflict. He doesn't like making waves. He doesn't, he's not the guy who's going to go in the room and go up to someone and introduce themselves. He's going to be the guy who sits in the back corner and waits to be recognized. And, and Paul is saying to Timothy, you remember when, when you were baptized and I laid my hands on you? And, and how, how public you were, how, how you cried, and, and, and you allowed yourself to, be, to express the joy of the Lord as you received these gifts. But now it's, it's like you're, you're a different person, Timothy. You're, you're timid. You're shy. You're, you're almost embarrassed of the, of the faith. Now, perhaps the problem is that Timothy was struggling with guarding the faith as well as fanning into flame. You can see this flame is flickering quite strongly. There's a lot of wind here. It's just a little tiny flame. It doesn't take much, and, and the AC will blow it out. So if I cover it, then it's going to be okay. And so perhaps Timothy built a shelter around the flame, and the shelter was the church. And so he, he covered the flame. But the problem is, the longer you allow the flame to stay protected in the shelter of the church, the dimmer and the dimmer it gets, and it starts to smother. But every Sunday, you can let it out. And once again, it grows strong and and light, and bright, and brilliant, but it's going to blow out, so I better cover it again on Monday morning, and I keep it hidden, whispering, this little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, and then I let it out Sunday morning, this little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, you know, I mean, that's the way we go through this cycle, Timothy's going through this cycle, and we go through this cycle as well, and sometimes this happens to people so much so that they forget to uncover the flame. And over time, that flame becomes smothered, and it may actually even go out to the point that it, it that no longer gives a light, and, and they continue to, to sing, this little gospel light of mine, and then they come to church and they, they, this little gospel light of mine, but there's no more light. It's gone. And so they go through the motions, but they wonder, where is God? Why is it that I don't see God working in my life? Why does God seem so distant and so far from me? Perhaps it's because in our effort to guard, we've smothered the faith. In our effort to protect the fire, we've so hidden it, so covered it and guarded it, that it's actually no longer a fire anymore. And that's Paul's worry for Timothy. Paul is worried that Timothy will smother the flame. Timothy needs to catch on and understand the depth of this word charismata. So I shared with you what the gift can mean. One thing that's interesting about the word charismata and gift, which seems like an everyday ordinary term, is that it's hardly ever used outside of the New Testament. That the common ordinary Greek-speaking Roman did not use the word charismata. We don't really know why, but I suspect it's because of the worldview that's embraced with charismata. It literally means 
the, the things of gift, the, the gifts of grace, the things of grace. And, and what it means is, uh, for the New Testament Christians, and I think for us, is that every gift is a gift of grace. As James says, every good gift comes from the Father above. So yes, it's the gift of life, and it's the gift of, of calling, and it is the gift of power, but it's also the gift of our home. It's a gift of our family. It's a gift of our health. It's a gift of the food that we eat. That every good gift comes from the Father above. And you see what a difference it makes when we begin to change our perspective and recognize that everything comes from God. And it's not just the things of the church that come from God, but it's also the things at work. It's not, not just my hard work, and it's not just my industry and my intelligence that success gives me success at work. It's the grace of God. And it's not my, you know, striking good looks, as wonderful as they are, that got my wife to say yes when I asked her to marry me. It was actually the gift of God. And that the health that we have isn't just because, you know, we eat granola and, and white meat and other things like that. It's because of the gift of God. It's the grace of God. And so now my witness is not just of the spiritual things of God, but it is of the gifts of God that he gives me each and every day. It's, it's hard to talk about spiritual things with unspiritual people. It's, it's awkward in, at work to, to talk about, hey, did, let me tell you what happened to me when I went to communion yesterday, and they have no idea what communion is. You're going to feel weird. They're going to feel weird. It just, but when you consider, praise God for this good thing to happen. Hey, I solved this problem. I'm so thankful that God helped me solve this problem. That everyday witness is fanning into flame the gift that is within us. Paul is telling Timothy, and he's telling you and me, just be a witness to declare the praises of God who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Paul really uh, nails it when he says in the text, do not be ashamed of the testimony about the Lord, nor about me, the prisoner, but, here's what we do, share in the suffering of the gospel. Share by the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he has given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. So one way to guard is to put a glass cover over the candle. Let's see if I can get it lit again. That's one way to guard it. Paul is saying there's another way to guard this flame. Make it a fire. Make it a bonfire. Fan it into flames. If this were a bonfire, that AC could kick on and, and it wouldn't touch it, right? And if it was a bonfire that was outside and it was this massive fire and a hurricane wind were to come forward, what would happen? The whole neighborhood would be on fire, which would not be a good thing. Don't do that. California can testify. That's not good. But when you think about this as the gift of the Holy Spirit... If we were to fan into flames the gift of the Holy Spirit so that our neighbors caught fire with the gift of the Holy Spirit, so our community caught fire with the gift of the Holy Spirit, can you imagine the transformation in the world that we live in today? If rather than protecting and shielding and suffocating, we fan it by simply being a bold witness of Jesus Christ, just simply acknowledging every good gift comes from the Father above. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. It's not real complicated, it's not real hard, and it doesn't have to be awkward. Just daily give thanks to God for what he has given to you. And when something good happens, acknowledge him as a giver of all good gifts. So that's my takeaway challenge for you this week, is to fan in the flame, fan it into fire, the flame, and guard it by building it stronger, by being a daily witness of the good gifts that God has given to you recognizing that you have not, only been, have not only received the gift of life and eternal life, but you have received abundance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please join me for prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are a gracious God and that every good gift comes from you. <clears throat> I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd open our eyes to see your generosity in our lives. Too often, we, we focus on what we don't have and, and focus on what we want, and we get distracted from what we have and what has been given to us, and we miss the moment. We miss the, the opportunity to praise you and our candle 
flickers and dims because of that. Open our eyes, Holy Spirit, and give us boldness to publicly declare to the world, this little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. In Jesus' name, amen.